I came straight from my undergrad doing zero anatomy into medicine where I needed to know anatomy in three months in order to pass my exams. That was really daunting. <laughs> Here's how I went from a low percentage student to a high percentage student with five easy steps. The first is space repetition. And if you haven't heard of this yet, you've been living under a rock because quite honestly, it's the best method to study. There are apps such as Quizlet and Anki that allow you to use space repetition automatically so you don't have to think too hard about setting it up yourself. But essentially what this is, is when you do a flashcard, you don't just do the flashcard, you actually rate it from a scale of, I didn't know this at all, or I knew this really, really well. And depending on that scale will depend on when you see that card. So if you're not doing so well on a card, you will see it more often than the cards that you do do well on. Now why this is really important for medicine, but especially anatomy, there are just concepts that we will pick up easier and we will understand easier just based on each individual person. And so things like question banks, as great as they are, they can't quite conceptualize what you already know. As well as that, you do tend to forget a lot in anatomy because there's a lot of knowledge to absorb. So just having that constant reminder pop up means that you won't forget those little niggling details that get you those high scores. Two, create an easy way to remember things. I'm quite a visual learner, so my easy way to remember things is by always having a diagram. So for example, if I'm trying to describe what hormones are produced by the hypothalamus, then I might have a picture of the hypothalamus just to trigger that memory. And this is great for anatomy exams, especially because if you're doing an anatomy spotter and you get a similar question, it may show you a diagram relating to that organ. And simply just by relating the question with the picture allows you to trigger that memory, trigger all that information that you've learned. Another really great way to remember these things is through songs or through acronyms. So my favorite one for remembering the names of the cranial nerves is on, 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 they traveled and found Voldemort guarding very ancient horcruxes. That way I can remember the starting letter for each of the cranial nerves. Number three is using different resources. Now I have a whole video on my anatomy books and what I love, especially love things like Grey's Anatomy, but there's so many websites out there and so many YouTube channels. My favorite ones though are Teach Me Anatomy. This is a really great website for just making things simplified. Ken Hub, these are the really good ones for going into detail. And Sam Webster, who's a YouTuber and actually my anatomy teacher. So I'm a bit biased, but his videos are Fantastic. He grabs anatomy models in the lab and actually points out where the anatomy is and takes away the models and shows you where everything is. And he's just so nice and casual to listen to as well. It's quite enjoyable to watch his videos. All these websites that I've mentioned will be linked in the description below. Four, work with the models. There's a reason why I love Sam Webster so much. And it's because as I'm watching his videos, I'm working with the models that he's quite literally used. Go to your anatomy lab, go to your anatomy lessons and learn with the models, especially if you know those models are gonna be used in the anatomy spotter. These aren't just great for like actually physically grabbing something for your memory, but it also gets you to conceptualize what anatomy is about and how it relates to each other thing. For example, I could learn all the muscles in the forearms, but there's like tens and thousands of them. Well, there's not thousands, there's tens of them. And it's so much easier just to take away each layer and learn it as I go through. And I could do that on Kenha, but it's really hard to get that visual aspect and like that physical aspect of the forearm. So any chance you can to revise anatomy, just go to the lab, pick up the model and feel around, have a look at it. You don't have the chance to actually go into the lab there's a great app called Complete Anatomy. It gives you a full size model on your laptop or on your iPad that you can take apart and deconstruct. And it comes with really great notes about pretty much everything you wanna know. It even has functions such as a beating heart so you can see how it moves in the body. And I think that's really cool. Again, that will be linked in the description below. Five question banks. Do not underestimate these. Your anatomy cards are gonna be awesome. Your Anki cards are gonna be awesome because they are made for you, but the questions in the exams aren't made for you specifically. You gotta get used to how people structure anatomy questions and how they structure any kind of question. Get out of your thinking and into their mind. And you do this through question banks. They are able to pick up on areas that you may have just forgotten about or lacked in your questions. And also they're able to develop those questions that are further than 
like what is this organ, able to actually put in a context that makes it relevant to medicine as well. So for example, a question may be, this person uh, is playing football and they break their collarbone, what nerve is gonna be affected or what organ may be affected after or what would their symptom be? So it gets you in that medicine and doctor mindset and it's why this is so valuable. So definitely get on the question banks. My favorite question banks for anatomy are Teach Me Anatomy, Ken Hub. I also really like PassMed. If you enjoyed this video and want to know a bit more about what other resources I use, I have a whole video here that you can click on and watch. And you can also click here to watch my latest video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.